and welcome to the fifth annual ACC Inventure Prize. While we are unfortunately not coming to you live from North Carolina State University's beautiful campus, NC State is still serving as this year's host. So fear not, we have innovated and will be coming to you instead virtually from multiple locations. Please also know that tonight's broadcast will still feature the best and brightest undergraduate student entrepreneurs from across the Atlantic Coast Conference. This year's budding game changers will once again compete head to head for cash prizes. $15,000 for first prize, $10,000 for second, and $5,000 for the People's Choice Award. That's my kind of choice. And I promise that despite tonight's virtual execution, you can still expect the same high quality and professional broadcast you've come to know from the ACC Inventure Prize. I give you my word, nothing has changed. Uh, Mama? Mama? We're hungry. Oh man, and that's what your dad is for. But he's playing video, playing video games. Okay, go eat some candy. Yes. Yeah, okay, so maybe a, a few things have changed a little. Brought to you by North Carolina State University. It's the 2021 ACC Adventure Prize. Join us as the Atlantic Coast Conference's leading innovators compete for $30,000 in prizes and patents. And now, Please welcome your host, Emmy Award winner, Faith Saley. Thank you, and welcome to the fifth annual ACC Inventure Prize. Oh, I love that fake applause. Give me five. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I felt that, Georgia Tech. Got a few from FSU, and you at the University of Virginia. Wow, wow, did that hurt? What a year it has been. Turns out a sudden shaking up of the old order really spurs on new innovations, if this year's entries are any indication. And they are. This is, after all, the nation's largest undergraduate student innovation competition. So if you want to see what technological breakthroughs are looming on the horizon, this is the place to start. Tonight, the ACC's brightest and best young minds will share their work with you in hopes of taking home our fantastic prizes. What a night it will be. So get comfortable and get ready to have your minds blown. This year, we're rolling things out a bit differently. Our teams have already submitted their pitches to the judges and then faced them in a virtual Q&A session. Our esteemed panel then determined our semifinalists, our five finalists, and our first and second place winners, all of whom will be revealed tonight. So we will start with the semifinalists brought to you in no particular order. Let's start blowing some minds. From upstate New York, our first team is Syracuse University. It's Shugex. Hi, ACC. My name is Russell Firon from Syracuse University, and I am the president and CEO of SugX. We are dedicated to revolutionizing diabetes management. Exactly two years ago, my family and I were shocked by a diagnosis that rocked my life, type 1 diabetes. I was young and healthy, but was hospitalized for a week due to ketoacidosis. The experience was unforgettable. Doctors surround you, and you subtly enter into this foreign lifestyle that you have to adjust to. For the rest of my life, I have to keep my blood sugar between certain levels. I face the process of pricking my fingers three times a day or wearing a bulky sensor that is attached to my arm or stomach every day. There are 32 million Americans with diabetes, and one out of three Americans have prediabetes. If that's not enough, diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. That is why my team and I invented the SugarX Watch, an all-in-one, wearable glucose monitoring system that is housed inside of a smartwatch. We reverse engineered from the user experience. It has a solenoid actuator with a specifically redesigned test strip and mobile platform that helps you keep on top of your diabetes with ease. Our mission is to break the negative stigma that has long been associated with diabetes. SugarX has a clearly defined target market that reaches users of all ages to help reimagine the sugar experience. 
We are working with experts from our university, industry pros, teaching hospitals, and medical centers on our roadmap and path to market. We have an FDA consultant, we've completed our patent landscape, and we'll be talking with potential manufacturing partners with input from our medical device experts. We've come so far, and I have not done this alone. I'm a biomedical engineer, and Ricardo Sanchez, the co-founder and CTO, is a talented industrial and interaction designer and is equally dedicated to the Suge X vision. Together, we are learning from and working with top-notch professionals. As a team, we'll strive to do what it takes to improve the lives of millions. I will continue to lead until I feel like my own life and others are no longer hindered by diabetes thanks to the Sugar experience. We are Suge X. Thank you. An excellent start. Moving on, the team from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, displays some Tar Heel know-how with Eats to Seats. My name is Mary Lacey Motley, CEO and founder of Eats to Seats. My company provides fundraising opportunities for nonprofits by partnering with stadium concessions to meet staffing needs during sports and entertainment events. So what problems do Eats to Seats solve? First, the problem of fundraising. Nonprofits are the heartbeat for millions of communities. However, fundraising and recruiting volunteers is especially difficult for smaller local nonprofits. Second, the problem of staffing event venues, particularly sports stadiums. These venues have long partnered with nonprofits to fundraise and staff concession stands. However, smaller nonprofits often struggle to meet demanding contract requirements and often burn out. As a result, nonprofits lose thousands in fundraising and concession businesses lose revenues from understaffed stands. Eats to Seats solves both these problems. We restructure staffing operations with our mobile business platform that prioritizes the nonprofit experience. So any organization, no matter the size, can serve their mission. We handle burdensome tasks for nonprofits while bridging the costly staffing gap for venues. We also provide excellent fan service through food delivery and contactless pickup, providing value to fans, venues, and nonprofits alike. After personally struggling to fundraise with a local nonprofit here in Chapel Hill, I founded Eats to Seeds in the fall of 2019, where we scaled to seven Division I venues across the Southeast and refined our business model here at Chapel Hill. In our first season, we generated over $60,000, half of which went directly to nonprofit partners, all while remaining profitable since day one. For partnered venues, we increased efficiency by an average of $35,000 per game. More importantly, we established meaningful relationships with nearly 100 nonprofits. Thanks to our mission-driven model, we were able to generate over $20,000 for local community improvement efforts in Chapel Hill alone. And that was just in our rookie year. Despite the pandemic, we remained operational. Post-COVID, Eats to Seats will enable venues to get back on their feet and nonprofits to re-emerge supercharged. We will fuel their missions and their missions will fuel our impact. And we would love your support spreading across the Atlantic Coast Conference. Imagine the positive change we can fuel together in our ACC communities, one hot dog at a time. Let's keep that spirit of innovation rolling along. Next up, it's University of Notre Dame with Mound Power. Hi, I'm Richard, a freshman at the University of Notre Dame and CEO of Mound Power. The sport of baseball is becoming increasingly competitive. Unfortunately, this leads pitchers to cut corners, push their limits, and cause irreversible damage to the fragile ligaments in their arms. We all know this happens in the MLB, but these tragedies aren't unique to the pros. A huge problem exists in the players you never heard of because they didn't get the chance to make it to the world stage. After hearing this, the Mount Power team dove in to find a solution. The common theme in coach testimony and professional research was that pitchers need to learn how to use their legs. By creating a propulsive force with the lower body, pitchers can take strain away from their arms while continuing to increase velocity. Unfortunately, coaches can't measure leg drive with their eyes. That's where Mount Power comes in. We created an affordable device and software platform that accurately measures the forces generated by a pitcher's lower body in real time. Mount Power's user-friendly software interface displays these forces as well as other calculations, so coaches can visualize the lower body feel they've been coaching for years, but never before in such a tangible way. Our technology allows coaches to peer into a pitcher's stability, timing, linear force production, kinetic change sequencing, and so much more. Through lower body assessment, coaches can keep their players safe 
and take their performance to the next level. Today's baseball coaches are very interested in data-driven player development. The Mountain Power device would be an affordable option for coaches that helps get their players better while also keeping them healthy. Hey guys, this is Tom Oldham with Dynamic Velocity. Uh, I've been using the Mountain Power, strongly suggested. If you're a professional organization, college coach, or a high school coach, uh, be, be sure to check out Mount Power. After testing, numerous baseball programs reached out to stay up to date with Mount Power's progress and to offer aid in beta testing and feedback. Some even offered to buy our handmade prototype right then. Coaches can't wait to get their hands on this product. Our competitors are either so expensive they're only used in the MLB, or they're affordable but don't offer coaches enough value. Mount Power takes advantage of a huge market gap by coupling the most important aspects of high-end professional technology with an affordability for the whole of the baseball community. Ultimately, by focusing on the most significant contributors to safety and performance, we provide pitchers of all levels with the tools they need to stay healthy and at the top of their game. If necessity is the mother of invention, then the Inventure Prize judges are the aunts and uncles of angel investing, so to speak. Let's meet them now. Hi, I'm Marcus Colston, CEO of Marcus Colston Enterprises. Our company empowers growth-minded athletes, entrepreneurs, and executives with the tools and strategies to help them shift their mindset and position themselves for sustainable success. As an angel investor and advisor to startups, I work with companies that are positioned to solve big problems and led by entrepreneurs that have the ambition and grit that it takes to go from idea to execution. Hi, I'm Ravila Gupta, and I'm the CEO of Bagshi Group. We're a full-service commercial solutions provider, providing legal, financial, and business services to our clients. This is the second time I'm judging the ACC Inventor Prize, and I am thrilled to be back. Hi, I'm Bob Young. I'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur. I've started a collection of businesses. The most famous one is Red Hat, currently running a company called Lulu.com and I'm really excited to be with you guys today. To paraphrase Bonnie Raitt, let's give our judges something to judge about. You know, they say offense gets attention, but defense wins it all. Let's see if that rings true tonight with University of Louisville's Dose Defense. This is my baby brother Garrett and I back in 2008. Don't let his angelic little smile fool you. He's actually quite mischievous. In fact, our product was inspired by a trip to the hospital after Garrett consumed almost an entire bottle of medication. Garrett's story was far from an isolated incident. Almost 160 kids a day visit the ER after an accidental overdose. And that's why we created Dose Defense, a pill bottle insert that limits pill output to just one at a time, allowing you better control in dispensing your medication. What makes Dose Defense truly unique is that we sell directly to pharmacies and over-the-counter medication producers to ensure that each and every bottle is safe before it reaches the hands of the consumer. We've tested our product with parents, children, geriatric patients, and pharmacists to find that our target market consists of two key facets, the buyers and the end users. Our end users are comprised of the 64 million U.S. families with children in their households and the 68 million members of the U.S. population above the age of 65. For families, Dose Defense prevents loose pills from spilling to be lost around the house and lessens the amount of pills a child can get out of a bottle. For the senior population, Dose Defense allows more control over dispensing medication as they experience aging complications like shaky hands, arthritis, or vision problems. Our buyers consist of both pharmacies and over-the-counter medication producers. Taking the wellness of their customers into consideration gives these companies an edge over their competitors as they play into the growing wellness initiative trending among consumers. We make the need for our product known to the buyers by mobilizing the end users to lobby for its implementation. Groups like mom bloggers and advocates for child safety have been instrumental in making the customer demand for our product known. Since our founding in 2018, we've assembled our advisory board, filed patents, and conducted beta tests with independent pharmacies. This spring, we begin manufacturing. To start manufacturing, we need $18,000 for our injection mold and a starting inventory of 300,000 inserts. We produce each insert for a fraction of a cent and sell for six cents each. Our break-even point is 300,000 inserts, which is more than attainable considering American pharmacists fill an average of 12 million prescriptions in a day. With the prize from this competition, we would be able to start manufacturing and fill orders from 10 different pharmacies across the nation. We're asking you to help us make the world a safer place. 
Let's make safety standardized. Thank you. You would think that after all these years of competition, the well would run dry. But nope, the innovations just keep coming. Next up, University of Miami's Munch Labs. Hello, my name is Colin Lee. I'm a junior at the University of Miami, and I'm extremely excited to talk with you today about Munch Labs. Since the coronavirus pandemic took the world by storm just one year ago, more than 110,000 restaurants have shut their doors permanently, an estimated 2.5 million restaurant workers have lost their jobs, and overall sales across the restaurant industry are down $240 billion. Existing restaurants are struggling to adapt to COVID-era dining in a digital-first climate, and this is where Munch Labs comes in. Munch Labs currently operates four cloud restaurant concepts, including breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late night concepts that can be applied nationwide inside of any existing restaurant or commercial kitchen. Our restaurant in a box model allows us to send all of the core equipment needed to launch a concept directly to a host and begin putting them through our intensive training and orientation program. Once set up, Munch Labs will officially launch the concept in their market supported by our advertising dollars. All that a commercial kitchen has to do to get started is sign up to host one or more of our concepts and source qualified team members. Then Munch Labs takes care of everything from marketing and supply chain operations to transactions and delivery for every concept. Adding a line of revenue has never been easier. Hosts never have to worry about inventory management or inventory costs either. Munch Labs systems automatically track what inventory is being used at every location and will automatically dispatch what supplies are needed at no upfront cost to the hosts. Our hosts typically generate anywhere from two to $5,000 per concept per week in additional revenue that would have been lost without our help. America's mostly family-owned 350,000 independent restaurants are the backbone of our economy, and we're excited to get them the help they need. All that we charge to get started is a $7,500 launch fee, which covers all the equipment, supplies, training, and marketing needed to get a host ready. After that, Munch Labs will receive 10% of the revenue generated from each concept in perpetuity. By the end of our first year, we're projecting 50 cloud restaurants in operation across 15 hosts in the United States, generating $60,000 a month in recurring revenue and $375,000 in gross setup fees. 2021 is about recovery and Munch Labs is planning to help America's independent restaurants do just that. I encourage you to learn more and keep up with us at munchlabs.co. Is anyone else suddenly hungry? Let's shift to our next team. From Clemson University, it's Nature's Gift. Hi, my name is Marissa Jansen, and I'm a co-founder of Nature's Gift, the reusable tampon applicator for people who want to incorporate sustainable practices into their menstrual routines without compromising on comfort. As women who menstruate and care about the environment, we wanted to design a product that addressed three main problem areas. Sustainability, because tampons and their applicators contribute to a lot of consumer waste. Ease of use and comfort, because periods are already a hassle enough and the products we use shouldn't be a part of the problem. Nature's Gift is a two-piece product that includes a hygienic silicone insertion sheath and a stainless steel insertion rod. Our product comes in two sizes with the ability to accommodate a variety of cotton core inserts, ranging from light to ultra flow needs. The target market for Nature's Gift is anyone who menstruates that uses tampons. As you can see, the tampon market size is expected to grow from 4.25 billion to 5.7 billion by 2024. The menstrual cup market also expects to grow by 309 million between 2020 and 2024, demonstrating a growing interest in sustainable menstrual products. Nature's Gift marries these two markets by incorporating sustainable initiatives to an already explosive tampon industry. As a sustainable menstrual product, Nature's Gift does have a few indirect and direct competitors. Both of our competitors have launched their own versions of reusable tampon applicators within the past two to three years. Competitor 1 uses a less forgiving material with a complicated lock mechanism, and Competitor 2's wraparound sheath creates an unstable deployment process that makes both products rather difficult for our consumers to use. Our silicone sheath and four pedal design make our product easier, more secure, and more comfortable to use. Compared to menstrual cups and period panties, Nature's Gift capitalizes on an existing process that most users would find an easier cleanup process. Why invest in our product? Nature's Gift will generate profits while saving customers money. Production costs come out to $4.50 per applicator, while we intend to sell at unit price of $25, generating an 82% profit margin. However, by purchasing Nature's Gift, our consumer's monthly expenditure drops from $13.50 to $4.54 per month, including the cost for cotton inserts. 
There's never been a better time to invest in sustainable menstrual health, and our product provides a means for menstruators to embrace a greener product without compromising on their routines. Here at Nature's Gift, we believe that you shouldn't have to compromise on sustainability and comfort. Thank you. Our swing through the schools of the ACC continues. Next stop, Duke University's student side. Hey everybody, my name is Dan Hepworth and I am one of the co-founders of Student Side. Student Side is a platform where high schoolers can chat with college students and we can then help colleges get insights about what students really care about through these conversations. One major problem is that the college search and application process is broken. We know it's broken because 51% of college students regret their school choice. Moreover, 25% of college students have transferred. And these numbers have likely only increased due to COVID, as students are now unable to tour at these different schools. Similarly, colleges also face a huge problem. The problem that colleges face is that they're out of touch with their students, who are their most important stakeholder. There are just so many questions that don't have a student-driven answer. For example, what do prospective students care about most? What do current students talk about most with prospective students? What do current students feel are the issues on campus that need the most improvement? And how do these answers differ amongst the thousands of universities across the nation? Our solution is StudentSide, a platform where high schoolers can chat one-on-one -on -one with college students for 30-minute video chats facilitated through Zoom. By connecting high school students directly to college students, we've seen some exciting results. This summer, we amassed a large team of 1,200 college students across the nation representing 150 universities. And with these students, we were able to have 250 conversations with high school students. And simply put, they love the product. College students are raving about it to their friends as are high school students. And many of these high school students come back for multiple chats with students at either the same school or different schools. While we've seen some exciting progress so far, there are some immediate next steps that we need to take. The first is facilitating a paid beta program with several universities. The second is improving our product such that we have a seamless intuitive user experience. The third is figuring out a, a blueprint for how we can bring this experience to millions of students and thousands of universities across the nation. Thank you. We all know that this past year has been anything but typical, making getting this far in our competition tonight even more impressive. We bring you the hurdles cleared along the way on the road to the ACC Inventure Prize. The road to the fifth annual ACC Inventure Prize was anything but typical. While the competition was once again hosted by North Carolina State University, eager to showcase the school's new entrepreneurship garage and other innovation resources, leaders agreed that in order to safely execute this year's competition, it would have to be a virtual event. That meant an earlier start, with schools beginning the search for potential teams in the fall and naming their Inventure Prize representatives earlier than ever. Once chosen, students immediately got to work on their pitches. Our mission is to save lives by protecting medication. Hi, I'm Lorraine and I'm a co-founder of GiveCard. Our vision is to improve the practice of sanitation and provide validation to hospitals. The polished pitch videos were uploaded to the ACC and Venture Prize website in early April so that viewers could place their votes for the People's Choice Award. And while fans voted, our judges got to work on the competition's most important round, grilling the teams. Who is that target market or that target user that you guys have identified? What kind of feedback do you have that this is actually more comfortable to What's your channel to market? With the results now out of their hands, contestants were finally able to relax and enjoy one of the competition's favorite activities, networking and getting to know the other participants. This year, through a virtual platform, of course. Welcome everyone to the 2021 ACC Inventor Prize networking event. This is the essence of the ACC, and you're enabling it. Thank you. There's got to be some big innovation in y'all's school. Making it here is no minor feat. I know we've had to tap into our inner toughness and resilience and entrepreneurial experience. Nearly two weeks have passed as students patiently waited, but tonight is finally the night to award the prizes and answer the most important question of all. Who will win the 2021 ACC Inventure Prize? 
Now that you've walked a figurative mile in the shoes of our competitors, let's sprint to meet our next finalists. From Boston College, it's Give Card. Hi, I'm Lorraine, and I'm a co-founder of Give Card. Give Card is a fintech nonprofit that issues specialized debit cards, digital donation systems, and revolutionary financial planning to Boston's homeless community. It was started two and a half years ago in a dorm room, and now has a team of 11 BC students. The problem is getting money to people facing homelessness. As the world goes increasingly cashless, homeless communities become increasingly marginalized. Also, individuals facing homelessness struggle to get donations because of the stigma surrounding how they spend their money. Additionally, research has shown us that as people transition into permanent housing, they lose their government benefits before they're fully settled, resulting in them falling back into homelessness. This is a gift card, a one-of-a-kind special debit card that we can add money to at any point with no cost and can be used almost everywhere except liquor stores and casinos. Over the last few years, we've worked with banks to come up with a special agreement where we can issue these cards to anyone with no identity checks necessary, which was previously a huge blocker to people facing homelessness. We give these cards to individuals facing homelessness in Boston and load $250 a month to each card, a value that came through research with BC School of Social Work. This money helps alleviate some of the financial burden on our cardholders, allowing them to focus more on transitioning into permanent housing. The beauty of this card system is that it only costs us $3 per each card issued, and then costs us nothing for sending any more funds to an individual, which makes it way more efficient than existing ways of moving money like checks or direct deposits. Also, the ability to add spending restrictions to cards means that we have way more spending flexibility than programs like government benefits, but more donor transparency than just giving out cash. We've already given out a dozen cards and they're actively being used in Boston. We can use the transaction data from these cards to better understand and improve how we're impacting different people. Being a nonprofit, we really have to innovate to keep ourselves sustainable. And so with every swipe of a gift card, stores pay us a portion of the purchase made. We've also had extensive conversations to lease out our card issuing services for things like welfare benefits through our system. Additionally, at greater scale, we can adopt some of the models that challenger banks use, like the interest made off of deposits to generate revenue. Thanks for listening. We're a gift card. Thanks to all our 2021 ACC Inventor Prize semifinalists. Next up, our finalists, our top five teams. Again, brought to you in no particular order. And we will also show you highlights from their Q&A sessions with the judges. First up, from mega hot Florida State University, it's Medi Cool. Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Dillahay and I'm here representing Team Medicool, where our mission is to save lives by protecting medication. Every year, an average of a dozen deadly storms wreak havoc on the United States. Even the least powerful of these hurricanes can cause life-changing damage and create widespread power loss. One in 11 adults suffer from diabetes, meaning that they require insulin, a temperature-sensitive medication, on a daily basis for survival. When the power goes out, what is just a minor inconvenience for so many of us is suddenly life or death for a diabetic. Diabetes-related deaths can climb an unimaginable 40% in areas impacted by hurricanes. This is devastating, and we want to help. Inspired by Hurricane Michael and the struggle of local families trying to provide medication for their loved ones, we have designed a unique product to preserve medication until power is restored. Medical uses thermoelectric technology to provide low power cooling in addition to implementing solar power to ensure temperature is maintained for as long as necessary. No other medical refrigerator on the market provides our unique combination of portability, storage capacity, and sustainable power. While some recreational electric coolers advertise using solar power for long-term cooling, they typically run for under a day and have a drastically higher price point. The global market for medical refrigeration is $3.3 billion. However, we're sitting in a blue ocean, positioned to be the only product targeting portable emergency medical refrigeration. We are primarily focused on partnering with disaster relief organizations. By working with these groups, already trusted in dire situations, we have the best opportunity to reach the largest number of people. Why take a chance on us? Well, we are the sole solution to a very real problem. We anticipate a production cost of $93 per unit and have an anticipated price of $500. Looking to the next five years, as we diversify our products and reach into additional markets such as third world countries, we see our sales skyrocketing. Numbers aside, we are here to save lives. 
In America alone, there are 34 million diabetics, and of them, 8.5 million live in high hurricane risk states. After Hurricane Katrina, the ADA recognized a need for post-disaster diabetic care. Medical can help them, the numbers make sense, the technology is there. I want to understand how it fits in the logistics chain. So um, do, do diabetics have this in their house in the event a hurricane is going to happen? Or do is it given to them before, during, or after the hurricane? So how do, how do they get hold of this? Our main avenue is to sell it to disaster relief organizations. So we would want to pitch this to them to have in stockpile before a disaster happens so that when it happens, they can either hand them out to people that they know will need it beforehand or right after the disaster happens. In your pitch to the disaster relief agencies, have you actually already spoken to any of them and, and what are they saying at this time? We've reached out to a few different um, agencies and we're waiting out for responses, um, but we've talk to some of the resources we have available to us at Florida State. We spoke with Dave Merrick, the director of emergency management uh, organization at MSU, and he had nothing but support for our product and for our direction that we were going. And he was supporting us to not even just target just the disaster relief organizations, but local and state governments as well. You guys led with diabetes um, and the challenges around that. Are there any other illnesses or, or diseases that, that you guys will focus on with the same problem? We have been focusing on diabetes because that's kind of the largest scale issue that we're looking at um, with insulin. But in addition to insulin, it could be used for things such as like glaucoma eye drops, um, EpiPens for people with severe allergies, all those types of medications. Woo, nice job handling those questions. It's time to learn more about our next finalist from Georgia Tech, it's Lizard Tech. Hi, my name is Mike Pullen and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Lizard Tech. As a high school wide receiver, I wanted a way to better protect my arms from turf burn but not sacrifice my grip on the ball. It turns out that common polyester compression sleeves are very slick when they come in contact with a football. This can promote fumbling, the bane of any player. Fumbling can cost you playing time, your starting spot, and at the highest levels, even your job. Let me introduce you to the Lizard Sleeve. The Lizard Sleeve is a compression arm sleeve with integrated grip-enhancing fabric and cutting-edge moisture removal technology. While I was designing this product, I was working in sports medicine for the Atlanta Falcons, so I'd go into our facility with ideas and prototypes and get real-time feedback from our players. My project advisor, Dr. Reedy, encouraged me to keep pursuing this, so I did. Myself, Dr. Reedy and my good friend Matt Kwan patented this product and founded what is now Lizard Tech LLC. In August, we filed our international PCT patent and are currently in the process of jurisdiction filing. In the age of COVID, all sports were halted. We had to think of other areas where our product was applicable. It turns out that football players are not the only ones who carry things of importance. Package delivery drivers, food surface workers, construction workers, moms and dads at home in the yard, the list goes on and on. Virtually everyone needs a way to protect their arms and grab more. We found that the feedback from this user segment was just as good, if not better, from that of our athletes. Here are a few quotes from our customers. We have sold hundreds of sleeves to Division I programs, fleets of package delivery drivers, and everyday people just trying to grab more. It was clear there was a real demand for this product, so we began to go for larger clients. We are currently in a wear test with the largest courier service in the country. Real drivers and warehousers are using the lizard sleeve as we speak. This is the last step before placing a large purchase order to equip their entire fleet. But this company is not the only one. To date, we are in similar trials and discussions with over five Fortune 500 companies. Titans of athletic wear, uniform supply, and workwear see the value of this product. The lizard sleeve has been featured in many publications and has even been seen in Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast, Star Talk. Winning the Adventure Prize would allow us to invest in more inventory, cover legal fees, and give us working capital so we can quickly scale our operation. We are excited about the endless applications of the Lizard Sleeve and hope you join us to grab more. Thank you. How do you currently sell it and how do you currently manufacture it? Is it individual sleeves? Yeah, individual sleeves as of right now. Our manufacturer is the world's largest synthetic knitter. They just started to want to work with startups we were actually their first one that they took on. From a product standpoint, are there any other features tied into to the sleeve itself? Yeah, absolutely. So it has abrasion resistance, grip enhancement, and also I have a little demo here to show you real quick. So this is the fabric that's on the outside. This is our moisture wicking fabric. So this is the side that would be against your skin. And I'm just going to put a few drops of water to, to simulate sweat. 
So as you can see here, that's where the sweat would be. And as you sit here and wait, it's gonna pull this from this side to this side. So you can see here against your skin is almost dry compared to the outside. So your skin is dry and now it moves it to the outside to then evaporate. How are you guys currently marketing the product? We haven't really spent a ton of money on marketing just through our social media, word of mouth, me going to talk to pro, like division one programs or going to talk to drivers and then bringing that up. We virtually spent no money on marketing and that would probably be something that uh, you know, money from the enterprise would go towards as we start to try and branch out a little bit. You have a really unique product. And if if I could rewind five five more years, I, I definitely would award. <laughs> appreciate that. Just when you thought the ideas couldn't get any better, the ACC's best keep raising the bar. Let's see if we can raise it again with University of Pittsburgh's Reachable Solutions. Hi, we're Reachable Solutions and we help our users regain independence. When conducting user outreach for a design course, we asked elderly people what their biggest issues were. One person, Cindy, complained about the inability to put on a jacket by herself. She explained to us that this prevented her from leaving the house if her son wasn't there to help her. And it's not just Cindy. Nearly one out of three American seniors suffer from limited mobility, which makes it difficult for them to complete activities for daily living, like dressing or cooking. The inability to perform these ADLs is the primary reason why nearly 10 million people have to rely on long-term care facilities, with another 30 million relying on caregivers. Assistive devices are a hit or a miss, usually a miss. Our users don't want something that's complicated or highlights their disabilities. That's why we strive to create innovative devices where the intricacies are in the engineering development, but the final product is simple to use, portable, discreet, and independent. Here's a video of our first product, the Jacket Joy, which helps people independently put on a jacket. It's currently on the market and generating sales after 18 months of development. What really inspired us to keep going was that users asked to buy our rough prototype in the early stages of our project. Since then, we've tested the Jacket Joy with over 100 users, half of whom haven't put on a jacket by themselves in over a year. With our device, every single user was able to independently wear a jacket within four to 16 seconds. While our users are those with limited mobility, our customers greatly vary. We sell to caregivers and those with chronic or short-term conditions. We sell directly on our website to caregivers or users who can buy the Jacket Joy as either a gift or an assistive device. We're also creating networks with medical professionals like occupational therapists. We send them samples and in turn, they show their patients. After directly testing our product, patients can buy a Jacket Joy for themselves. Reachable Solutions is just getting started. The Jacket Joy was our premier device, but we already have two more devices that are patent pending and ready to hit the market. We started as a design project in a class that just wanted to help Cindy and her friends wear jackets again. But after two years and nearly 4,000 hours of work, we formed a company. We've created patent pending devices, we've started selling products, and we've created a brand. We're Reachable Solutions, and we're making independence reachable. How's the competitive environment to what you're doing? Are, are there other ways of solving the problem that you're trying to address? Our primary consumer product competitor is the dressing stick. That is essentially a long stick with a hook at the end of it. It's meant to be a multi-purpose stick to help you with a wide variety of clothing. And it's not really geared specifically towards jackets. Since it's a long, almost two to three foot stick, it's not portable. So you can't take it when you go out. Um, if you're going out with a jacket, you know, you're, you're still going to need to have to put the jacket on wherever you are outside. So it doesn't work as well. What we've actually noticed about our users is our main competition isn't in the form of a consumer product. It's in the form of things like relying on caregivers or not wanting to seem like they have a disability. And so that's where a lot of our messaging testing comes into play of how can we get people to adopt this without highlighting the disability. I love the B2B2C model. Do you guys feel like there's a need to train some of the uh, providers that you are, are selling to or providing samples to? When we typically develop OT relationships, uh, we usually have a Zoom meeting with them with usually me, Bella, and sometimes their CTO. And we show them the device. We also have PowerPoint slides ready and we have um, user guides that kind of walk you through the whole process. But in the future, we've been working on user guides and how to communicate it without having to have that personal meeting. Because when we scale up, we won't have the ability to meet a thousand different OTs. 
As you can see, the ACC and Venture Prize teams and their innovations present an embarrassment of riches. And that becomes even more apparent when you consider the achievement of past contestants. You can learn more about those teams by asking a very simple question, where are they now? For five years, the ACC and Venture Prize has been the biggest collegiate innovation competition in the world. Welcome to the first ever ACC Inventure Prize. But you don't have to win it all in order to find success. Just ask the members of TrackX, who represented North Carolina State in the very first year of the competition. The ACC Inventure Prize taught us to think like entrepreneurs. Ever since graduating from NC State, we've been helping startups innovate in the fintech and digital adoption space. Other participants have continued to grow their companies, like Ali Rogani, 2018 finalist with Thermosense from Virginia Tech, and 2019 second place winners from Syracuse, Quinn Keen and Alec Gillander of Medex. Despite competing in different years, Ali and Quinn met at the 2020 Student Entrepreneur Awards in San Francisco, placing them among the top 33 student entrepreneurs in the nation. Other contestants have also made huge strides. Brandon Young of Pascal Tags represented Louisville in 2018 with a battery-free inventory tracking device. Since graduating, the company has landed several Fortune 500 clients. And Ultraview, Georgia Tech's 2018 entrant, recently surpassed $1 million in annual sales. By striving to provide the best product in each product category in the sport of archery, I fully expect Ultraview to someday be a $100 million company. And 2019 finalist Angela Udongwo, who represented Florida State with Inno Health Diagnostics, a startup focused on bringing inpatient centered diagnostics to neglected tropical diseases, understands the unlimited potential awaiting participants of the ACC Inventure Prize. Getting a startup off the ground can be extremely difficult, especially as a student, but school is your safety net. So, my advice find mentors and find a team and execute. And the ACC Adventure Prize is a perfect place to launch your idea. From where are they now to here they are, wow. Let's meet our next finalist from our host school, NC State University. It's UV Scope. Hi there. My name is Monique Reed, and I'm here to tell you about a revolutionary product called the UV Scope. Imagine yourself or a loved one having to go to a hospital, the place designed to protect you, and you leave worse off than when you came, with an infection. Well, our team is here to help solve that problem. Our vision is to improve the practice of sanitation and provide validation to hospitals. Every year, nearly 2 million people get sick and 90,000 die from just going to a hospital. This can cost upwards of $30 billion per year. Current technologies are rarely used to validate sanitation practices due to cost and extensive analysis. Fortunately, the UV scope can do just that and is priceless compared to the number of lives that we can save. As demonstrated in previous studies, our technology revolutionizes bacteria detection by using deep UV light to measure its fluorescent emissions. We predict that the UV scope will have increased data specificity, lower associated costs, and be faster than any other technology on the market. We are actively testing and prototyping and believe we found a commercialized solution for hospitals. We plan to work with hospitals by offering trainings, demonstration, and support as they integrate our solution into their existing procedures. By year four, we expect our target market to be $20 million with about a 70% net profit margin. To drive sales, we plan to attend sanitation-related conferences to market the UV scope. Current technologies use chemicals and non-portable UV light. However, neither of these solutions offer an advantage in cost, satisfaction, and validation. The UV scope will provide immediate feedback and quantifiable data to assure the effectiveness of cleaning. With diverse backgrounds in biomedical and electrical engineering, our team is equipped and dedicated to solving this problem. The UV scope is redefining the sanitation market. We plan to optimize the UV scope to become portable, user-friendly, and manufacturable within a reasonable budget. We hope to debut our device to infection prevention specialists and medical officers from previous customer interviews. So join us towards a safer and healthier future, one UV scope at a time. Thank you.
Does your device measure all bacteria or is a subset of bacteria or, you know, what are you looking for exactly? Our device will measure all kinds of bacteria. Um, it's primarily going to be using uh, the chemicals within the bacteria and the cytoplasm itself uh, that's going to actually do the fluorescence that we can measure. So we expect to be measuring all kinds of bacteria. And as we develop the product, we actually believe we can differentiate between different types of bacteria as well. You mentioned some of your competitive advantages. Would you mind walking me through what makes your product different than the existing products that hospitals are using now? The only thing that's even comparable right now, there are two devices. Um, one is called an ATP meter and uh, one is called total viable count test. Our main advantage over ATP is that every time you need to do a test, you need a swab and you need a bottle of, re of reagent. That can cost 10 bucks per test. It's the testing that they need uh, in order to know if they're cleaning things correctly, they need to be doing hundreds of thousands of tests very rapidly. And the ATP test simply cannot do that. Our product, however, will be able to take measurements in milliseconds and it will literally be point and shoot, like click, 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 and it will tell you how much bacteria is on a surface. And what is the price? Oh, our price is around $3,000. And what do you think your cost on this thing is? So the cost at low scale, which we expect right now to be about 100 uh, units a year, is about $600 a unit. These finalists are all so amazing, but it's not over yet. Here now is our final finalist from the University of Virginia, it's Brave Virtual Worlds. I grew up playing team sports. I treat my teammates like family. But no one sees us more as family than our coaches. They want us to succeed, reach our full potential, but most importantly, not get hurt. However, there are 8.6 million sports-related injuries in the US every year. At the high school and college levels, the total cost can go upwards of $20 billion. Coaches' times are also maxed out training their athletes, and the technology to assist them are usually constrained to one location. We are Brave Virtual Worlds, a company developing motion capture hardware and data-driven software to be your eyes on and off the field. Our solution provides more training time, reduces injuries, and adds an edge to performance. We designed and manufactured our own custom lightweight motion capture suit. It's wireless, doesn't have cameras, and can be set up in less than two minutes. Using our custom machine learning models, we're able to provide live feedback with both visual and audio cues, putting the data to use quickly and easily. Plus, wherever the athlete is working out, at home, at the gym, or on the field, their data is shared with their coaches, keeping them in the loop. In terms of our competition, our setup time is six times faster than the best on the market. We also provide easy to understand data through our machine learning models that reach upwards of 90% accuracy when identifying key movement features. We are also developing our own motion capture library, allowing us the opportunity to understand human movements like never before. After developing our MVP back in 2020, we began to explore PT, sport, and military opportunities. We identified that our initial target market is sports within which we have over 120 customer discovery interviews and have secured our first paid pilot. After receiving our notice of allowance from the USPTO, we aim to continue to explore and expand into other verticals in the future. Our team of engineers and clinicians and zero entrepreneurs have worked passionately on Brave for the past three years. The support from competitions and programs have made Brave what it is today, but looking towards the future, we aim to help millions of people understand the way they move. What is your channel to market on this thing? We've actually heard a lot of feedback from our paid pilots, as well as over 100 customer discovery interviews, that we should tap into the current existing athletic network. So we know that pros know each other, young athletes look up to pros, and sports teams research each other so that they don't lose out. We have had a lot of success sending cold emails, sometimes with a warm introduction, as seen with two paid pilots. Uh, we have an IRB study, and also we have ongoing conversations, such as a demo in June with the Arizona Cardinals. One area that you guys really highlighted was that, that motion capture library that you guys have that, that seems to differentiate you guys. How do, how do you leverage that library into your business? 
Yeah, so motion capture, you know, the fundamentals of movement are very important to not just athletes, but everyone. Um, and we think by building a, a motion capture library, we can sort of take all those movements that everybody does, put it in one location and expand upon that to, to something like virtual reality, for example, because we can bring motion to VR. So what you see in 2D can be made in 3D, which is a whole new world to be able to explore and see what's going on. And by building that library, we can tap into that potential, which is something we've done in the past and we can do in the future. Is there a specific, uh, what, a problem or, or issue that you guys are, are going to break through on? Is it hamstring injuries that you're going to solve? Really, we're targeting everyone. If you move, you can get hurt. If you move, you can move better. So we really do think that we can just target everyone. And that puts a bow on all of this evening's presentations. Before we get to the awards, here to share his thoughts on this year's competition and on NC State University's nationally recognized innovation facilities, please welcome Senior Vice Provost for Academic Outreach and Entrepreneurship and McPherson Family Distinguished Professor, Dr. Tom Miller. Hello, I'm Tom Miller, Senior Vice Provost for Academic Outreach and Entrepreneurship at NC State. We're honored to host the fifth annual ACC and Venture Prize competition here at NC State, home of the Wolfpack. This competition provides an important platform to showcase the best and brightest undergraduate entrepreneurial minds in the ACC. Entrepreneurship and innovation is at the core of our DNA here at NC State. We're one of eight universities in the nation to be ranked in the top 20 for both undergrad and graduate entrepreneurship programs in the country by the Princeton Review and Entrepreneur Magazine. In 2019, NC State had the opportunity to host the competition for the first time right here in Raleigh. And despite plans to host it again in 2020, we had to cancel the competition due to the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted plans, scrambled existing networks, shifted markets and made us all acutely aware of the fact that we cannot predict the future. But despite that chaos and uncertainty, students across the ACC have continued innovating and solving big problems. In true entrepreneurial fashion, they have risen to the challenge posed by the pandemic and are boldly navigating and pursuing their ventures despite our new normal. Every team that is competing today should be very proud to have been selected to represent their universities. You are the best of the best. We wish you all great success. It's time to get to the good stuff. Let's award some prizes. And to help me with that, I invite back my two favorite helpers who have put their own touch on this year's winning envelopes. Did y'all use the smelly markers? Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Okay, first up, it's the award you decided, the People's, the People's Choice Award as determined by all the people. All right, that's many of you watching, I think. The winner of the 2021 ACC and Venture Prize for People's Choice Award in a check for $5,000 is from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill team eats two seats. We turn now from the People's Choice to the awards decided by our expert panel of judges. Second place envelope, please. Great job, I'll say. And the 2021 ACC and Venture Prize second place winner who will receive $10,000 is from University of Pittsburgh Team Reachable Solutions. It's all led here to this moment from countless entries across the ACC to our semifinalists to our five finalists. And now to this moment. Well, almost this moment. What separated our winner from the rest? I spoke with our judges and asked them how difficult their decision was to make. What surprised you the most going through this process? One of the things that really surprised me is how far along some of these entrepreneurs are. We, we had some companies that had hardware prototypes. You know, we had another company that started to figure out uh, manufacturing. Thinking back to my college experience, it, it, it looked nothing like this. How hard is it to judge these brilliant young people? The reality is judging is by its nature very unscientific and very subjective. They were all great and they were all passionate and it's coming down to just really distinct differences. So like tiny differences. Is there an X factor that, that also arises when you're deciding on who should win? At the end of the day, we're three judges. We have our own life experiences, our own business experiences and perspectives. And in a lot of ways, we're judging intangibles. A good team will take a bad idea and make a success of it. 
and a, a unenthusiastic team or a less creative team will take a great idea and will fail with it. I think for me, it was uh, a couple of the companies explained the reason for starting the company. Um, and that really resonated and clicked with me. I'm personally looking at whether or not it's solving a big problem. I'm looking at like, is there a real problem in society that we're dealing with? And is this a solution? Now it's time to announce our first place team who will receive a check for $15,000. May I have the envelope, please? Thank you. Great job. Yay. Smiley face. I feel nervous. The winner of the 2021 ACC Inventure Prize is from NC State University, Team UV Scope. And that concludes the fifth annual ACC Inventure Prize. Thank you for watching and being a part of this celebration. And congratulations to all the undergraduate students across the ACC who made it to tonight's show and the educators behind them. You all are truly world changers. And thank you to the wonderful people at NC State University for hosting this year's competition. We will be back next year from the state-of-the-art Ruby Diamond Concert Hall on the campus of Florida State University. Until then, remember, every accomplishment begins with an A-C-C. -C. Good night. Funding for this program was made possible in part by the Atlantic Coast Conference Academic Consortium and Raytheon Technologies Research Center. We've marched, prayed, rallied, voted, joined arms, and united. And yet, the effort has only just begun. We, we encourage, encourage everyone, in your own way, throughout each day, to help make this world decent, decent and fair and, fair and honorable. honorable. From our campus to your home and community, we, we can, can do this, this. Together. together, one interaction and one conversation at, at a time. time.